Okay, Dan, we're live. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for Great doing this. Great to be this. back with you. Uh, all the way from Greece, uh, coming yeah. through through the power of the internet. Um, for those who are not familiar with Dan, uh, I just want to pull up something, Dan. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Uh, I know you don't uh, like to you know, toot your own horn, but I actually went ahead and I, I went and I searched your profile on tip ranks. And uh, you're in the top 2% of, uh, of the 8,500 Wall Street analysts that are tracking. You have five mm. stars and uh, you have, you know, the top 2%. I mean, it's not surprising uh, for the guy who called Tesla early. And we'll talk about that. I mean, uh, you can actually scroll down here and see that. I think you got into Tesla in uh, uh, 2018, I think, right? Uh, which was super early. Let me show people. Um, I have this Tesla thing pulled up right here. So I think this was it, right? So stock was at what? Well, that was, yeah, again, aggressive. Yeah. $20, $22. So you got it. So you called Tesla early and you've been in a shit ton of great stocks. And uh, I have to ask you a question. You've done this very famous interview where you said uh, that Palantir is, you know, the, the messy of AI. Mm -hmm. Did you expect that it will blow up the way it did on social media and like all this uh, all this attention and everything did you know it's gonna this this uh, tsunami of attention is gonna come or was it just another day in the office for you yeah i didn't re i mean like i didn't expect that it was going to be that type of sort of impact i look i i did, i'd say the thing that actually surprised me the most institutional just how hated palantir is Oh yeah, you know, from an from, from from an institutional perspective, and, and I think that continues to be a narrative, right? And look, I mean, Tom, as you, I, I think as as investors have known me for twenty three years, I don't call stocks just for the next week or two, or into earnings. I mean, we kind of we go for the themes, the winners. And ultimately, we we really pound the table on them, and that's how we've done with Microsoft and Apple and Tesla and you know Amazon and others. And in my opinion, Palantir is it's an undiscovered gem from an AI perspective. Do is there anything uh, you think Palantir can do uh, to change that narrative? Because you mentioned this correctly, and I'm going to show people how bad it is right now. Um, the narrative is very, very uh, negatively um, skewed with Palantir. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys, every all the viewers, you take a look at this thing. Uh, this is Stock MVP, by the way. This is a platform I built. I'm going to plug it here in the stream. But uh, if you look at Stock MVP, you look at percentage of institutional shareholding, obviously it's going up, but it's at 34%. I mean, it's super mm -hmm. low for a company with you know half of its business coming from <clears> the government. And that type of company you would expect to see way more. But think back at Tesla. But do, let's just go back six, seven years for Tesla. Institutional wouldn't touch it, right? Retail was well yeah. ahead institutional. And ultimately institutional then really started to better understand the story. And obviously the rest of history is must built everything out. And, you know, in my opinion with, with Palantir, this is not, for the next day, for the next week, for the next month, for them, it it's them leveraging their success from government to enterprise. I think it's the best pure play AI platform out there. I think AIP is a game changer. I, I think that's really, I wouldn't necessarily say like a model three, model Y type thing with Tesla, but in other words, I think that's what's really gonna put them on the map. And when you look at how big the opportunity is around AI, I, mean, I, I view them as like, we, we could talk about NVIDIA and Microsoft and yeah. Google, but when you, you could, on both hands, you can name what I'll call like the first, second derivative AI players. I mean, Palantir is there. Well, I'm not gonna argue that with you because uh, we've been, you know, uh, people who follow Palantir, uh, the first time I heard machine learning was uh, in the Palantir yeah. presentation back in the day before I even knew what it meant. 
and then we saw uh, we saw it kind of become this uh, gold standard. But um, I want to I want to ask you a little bit of a tougher question that doesn't get asked a lot. Oh, uh, and, and just one one th- and just one thing before you could you just answer your question like could they do anything better? <clears throat> I actually think they I think Carp and the team are starting from a you know from conferences mm-hmm. to getting out there. Yeah. Um, I, I I do believe they're they're doing some of the right things. And I think those are just block and tackling things that maybe they wouldn't have done a few years ago. Now they are doing. So you think one of the things that drove that, uh, that announcement that they're going to be buying back a billion dollars of shares is an attempt to talk that language of Wall Street to get institutionals more interested? Or was it more of a uh, kind Look, of a retail play? I, I mean, I think that's just a prudent move. I mean, if I look mm. from Apple to Microsoft, to Google, I mean, a company like Palantir, given where I believe they could be from a cash flow generation, did a direct listing, right? Not an IPO. I, I think that's a prudent move. That's something they're not doing that just to scare the shore. I think that's just from a capital allocation strategy. That's something that they needed to put on the table. So just as an institutional investor, if you're talking to Palantir, one of the top questions would be, do, do you have a buyback? Now That's the do. question they ask. Uh, they ask Elon all the time, and he doesn't have a but, good answer yet. But but and again, Tesla, you're different, as you know well, for a number of yep. different reasons. With Palantir, I think that was like made a ton of sense, and it goes back to like you know a lot of times, and of course, on so and I love like the engagement on social media just to see it. A lot of times, like when stocks sell off after quarters. You know, everyone's like, ah, oh, it's over, done. It's over, it's finished. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> you know, like, in, in, enjoy the whatever, like, enjoy the pump. And the, I yeah. mean, when you when I'm looking at names like this, I'm looking at names like a pound here for the next two, three, four, five years. Exactly. We and I gotta I gotta be honest with you. You you're probably the most engaged uh, Wall Street analyst on Twitter. I can't think of anybody else except. Gary Black, who's very engaged with the Tesla community. Uh, One from it's... macro, Tom Tom Lee is very engaged. You know, from a macro perspective. Yeah, I just did a video covering one of his predictions. Uh, he's a superstar. I like him a lot. Dude, he's uh, he's the yeah. goat. Like, if he, he's the definition of the goat. Well, he called the bull run of the first half of the year, and nobody saw it coming. At least, like in our community, nobody talked about the bull run. Um, but yeah, so I was saying you're super engaged in the in the community, and that's uh, so weird to see because I learn most... a lot. Really, I I learn I learn a ton. I mean, to me, it's I like engaging. First of all, it's like look, I've done I've done this job going 23 years, okay, covering tech stocks, going back to like you know late 90s. Institutional, that's what I've always done retail as it's become more and more important in terms of I, I think not just in terms of like the market but i mean like i've talked about palantir retail discovered ahead of institutional that's that's a fact i like, right i know that, that, that there's no dispute there and i do you think that, think, that game changed yeah. in the pandemic pandemic switched the uh, kind of the the script a little bit where you know when i was when i was uh working in the industry in the 2010 era, it was all about institutional money driving the markets and retail is just jumping on the ride. And now I hear like institutional investors trying to figure out what retail is going to do in their kind of well, game. Pl- yeah, but, but Tom, it's like, I mean, just like, I mean, obviously like within the Palantir community, there's you know yourself and me, there's a number of other, in Tesla community, you know, I mean, look what Gary Black's done, right? Like yeah, if Gary's, you just think about yeah as he's built it um you know look 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 what troy's done I, like all i'm just trying to say is that to ignore it would be i i think would actually be like a super negative for that individual because i think you need eyes open and i actually like i and i think a lot of things from feedback we see on twitter to things getting discovered I think you learn a lot from engaging. That's at least that look that that's always been my DNA. Um, do you think there's a, in the case of Palantir, um, 
what do, like the buybacks uh, you, th- you you think it's a smart play i tend to agree with you not that you know it's not i'm not interviewing myself here but the way i see it as somebody who's uh, obsessed with this company uh, look palantir isn't building factories they, they don't need a, a whole lot of capex it's it's a scalable product they're, they're writing code so uh, if you if you palantir and you're sitting on three billion dollars of cash and you have virtually no debt uh, it, it's a smart move. And people ask me, well, well, why wouldn't they do that earlier when the stock price was at seven? Because it would have seemed desperate and would have signed the wrong yeah. message. I mean, you can't do it mm-hmm. on weakness. You have to do okay. it in position of strength. I agree. But coming off of that, mm-hmm. what do you think Palantir can do uh, better to attract more institutional investors in the future beyond the buybacks? Well, <clears throat> the biggest pushback. So let's walk through like the biggest pushbacks from, from an investor perspective on Palantir. It's Clearly valuation, right? And and valuation, as I've always talked about, like if you try to put transformational growth names in a box and look at PE over the next year, you wouldn't miss Netflix, Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. In other words, I I just, I believe transformational growth names, you can't look at them one year out. You got to look at it on a normalized model what the company's going to look like three, five, seven years from now. And then whether it's DCF or however you want to sort of value that, I think that's what you got to do. Now, the second big pushback is just, okay, you're talking about this messy of AI, but they're growing 13%. What, what, where, what am I missing? That's look, that's what, that's legit, right? Like as a, as a pushback. So there's a question. It's a good question. Yeah, but, but to that point, My pushback to that is the accelerating growth story is is ahead of it. In in other words, and it reminds me a lot, like I could go to instances for Tesla, for Microsoft, for Apple, Mm -hmm. for Google, where there were times where growth at the time didn't, didn't make sense relative to the opportunity. But it came. That's that's my view. Like that you're gonna have an accelerating growth story as we go into 24, 25, 26. And that's why like I like have talked about like AIP, like in my opinion, that's what I view as sort of the the holy grail. The game change. Yeah, well, it's the whole but but it's the holy mm. grail because parlaying into enterprise, we could talk about NVIDIA GPU chips. Yep. And cloud platforms all I want, Microsoft, Google, where are the use cases? I mean, from a use case perspective, I believe from a platform, like that they're, they're one of the first calls now that you're gonna get. I get all the you know, some of the negatives, at least how it's viewed, you know, from a government perspective, but those are the best reference customers that three letter yep. agencies you'll ever have. Uh and by the way, um, I absolutely love your shirt. Uh, you're, you're a fashion icon over in our community with your suits and the shirts. I just want to mention to people you're on vacation. So <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the attire suits the, the, the event. Um, Thank you. Um, I, I, love, I love that choice. Um, but also it makes it, it makes it fun because also it comes down to like, it's always been, and it's the way I go to meeting, like go to meetings. Like if people see me in an airport or in the street, like I dress you in the, the purple same. in the purple suit in the <laughs> purple suit. But the point is, I do because also it's like it's my personality. It's fun. Yeah. I get it. Some people don't, but it's just like, and also I think it speaks to like, it speaks to just my view of like you know I view things differently. I'm not saying I'm right. There's people I'm watching this be like, dude, everything that guy says I hate or disagree with. That's well, fine. I've been, That's- I've been on YouTube for 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 five years. I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, whenever you're gonna go out and say something in the public, there's gonna be an inherent percentage of people who're gonna think you're a douchebag just by talking. I mean, it's normal. But no, but but the point is, I I have a I have certain theses on names. We do a ton of work in terms of like talking to IT talking to the channel, talking to customers, and then we pick our winners, right? Like, in other words, like, and that's how, like our formula, that's how we've done it. Whether it's cybersecurity, yeah. cloud. Well, you have vehicles, a lot of cool names in cybersecurity. I, I, you've covered a lot of uh, Palo Alto Networks, uh, uh, 
Veronis, I think, like uh, a lot of really cool names. Yeah. Um, uh, Fortinet, I think Fortinet, you went early. Like a lot of these <clears> names, like, look, nobody, people forget, but because like people have short their memory. In 2018, nobody wanted to touch Tesla. Tesla, Tim yeah. Cook wouldn't take a meeting with Elon Musk. For, for, I mean, uh, you coming in with that buy rating that early, people kind of forget. Uh, I, I want to come back to Palantir in a second. I just want to touch on Tesla a little bit if you already kind of mentioned Tesla here. Because uh, you are one of the OGs on the Tesla uh, scene, so you have a price target of three hundred fifty dollars for Tesla. Uh, in the Tesla bull community, that's considered low. I was interviewed by one of their main head bulls, and my fourteen hundred price target was considered embarrassing for them. They were like, "Oh, that's too low." But, <laughs> <clears throat> but um, I, I, look, um, I, I want to ask you something uh, about Tesla. As somebody who came in early, when was that moment for you when you knew like Tesla was something special, that eureka moment for you? When it happened? To me, it was it was really probably in two thousand in probably two thousand eighteen, it was being at one of their events for one of their introductions. I forget exactly what it was. And I, and and obviously the cyber truck. <clears throat> the glass broke incident. And I think it remi- it's the only company that's ever reminded me, and it's my view of Musk, of like the 2007 moment when when Jobs released the iPhone and just seeing the, euthor- like the euphoria there. And I think that's something that you can find in a spreadsheet. You can find when you're in an office building. And look, like, whatever, 3 million miles flown. Like the point is like, like we've traveled a lot, but a lot of it is like, that's where we see things that maybe others don't, right? Uh, I, and the thing about like what, um, I'm really envious of Tesla. Like Tesla and Palantir are two of the most, I think misunderstood companies in the market. But for Tesla, okay. the journey to that, to, to fill that gap from misunderstood to, uh, to brilliance, in the eyes of the investor is simpler because there's a product, there's a tangible product you can go and experience and you can benchmark it against a premium uh, four-door sedan and then you have that eureka moment. So we, I was just out on vacation and a buddy of mine was driving, I told you totally earlier, offline the Model Y and <clears> I was driving a, an E-Class, a Mercedes E-Class and I can tell you his car was hands down better experience in every possible way. So that benchmark makes it really easy. With, with the company like Palantir, like, it's a little bit different because the it's a B2B uh, category well, so it's hard to touch and feel you know it's not like tesla and actually like volunteer if i go if i go back like year like years ago you know i have strong <clears throat> strong roots relationships like you know within dc within you know a lot of individuals that formerly were in the military you know with special forces stuff like that and you know, there's a lot of these people come out and they and they and they start companies they want to get funding right i think i've helped i've helped many of them over the decades right introducing them to people you know whether they're 8200 mi6 you know because it, and and what i've learned especially in that community like the the view of palantir within the defense community with within military stellar um yeah. stellar and look and yeah. i just keep coming down to like if tom or dan tom nash dan is a is a cio of an enterprise looking to build out ai solutions over the next year talk look me in the eye and tell me how they're not the first phone call at least yeah. Yeah. or at least front and center in that engagement yep uh, so what do you think of like it, I, I agree with you here and uh, it's kind of funny to see that happen uh, i was i had you on the show a year ago and a year ago we were talking all about tesla and then you said hey it's too i we didn't really talk about palantir back in those days a year ago i was making videos and i was saying look Palantir is facing kind of this political um, headwind. In a sense, uh, they don't really have a competitor in the market per se, but what's happening is like a lot of these CIOs 
they have their own kind of Frankenstein product set up, which costs a shit ton of money to these companies. And they're really embarrassed or apprehensive about bringing an external solution after they spend so much money. They don't sure. want to look bad. So they're basically cock blocking Palantir from getting in through the door. And it's kind of surprising how enterprise software in America is more political than even the government in America, which is kind of funny. But I said, look, at the end of the day, they're going to break through because there will be a few smart CIOs who will understand the value of this. They'll utilize it. They'll beat the competition. Then it's going to be even worse if you don't use it than just to embarrass yourself by bringing them on. And then you're going to be, like Palantir is going to be getting phone calls. Hey, come over, show us what you got, which is exactly what Sham and, 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 and Alex was talking about in the conference call. And it comes down to shots on goal. Like, yep. just, and I think that's what you're seeing with the 100 customers, the 300, you know, potentially in the pipeline that, 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 that ultimately where this is. And that's why, look, I, when I call stocks, I just, I don't call them for uh, you know, preview, review. Okay, th this is yeah. what happened, earnings. This I view yeah. it as like forest through the trees, yeah. disruptive tech. And it goes back to Tesla, right? Like, Tesla, many continue. They view it as an auto company. That's how it should trade. I've always viewed it similar as Apple, disruptive tech. It's such a crazy misunderstanding of what they do. I mean, you can categorize them in a lot of ways and you cannot like the stock and it's okay. You can say, well, they're expensive or there's a lot of uncertainty. That's fine, but to say it's an auto company given what they've shown us so far, uh, just just on the energy side, forget Robotaxi, forget uh, robotics, just on the energy side, mega packs are an industry stranded by this point. Uh, well, that's why I think, you know, and, and there's a whole other conversation, but with... By the way, you have a with, comment here from somebody from my community who is actually an ex, uh, ex-military, and he's saying that from first-hand knowledge. Great. Awesome. So just, just to prove am, your point from earlier, I heard it a hundred thousand times. No, but 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 it goes back. But but to me, like, I like even like when it comes to, like cybersecurity, part of our calls. If I just go back on like Pal out the Z scaler, yeah, you know, Crowd Strike or that, it comes down to like, what do IT managers think? What do channel people? think is yep. it good is it great is it elite simple as that by the way what are your thoughts on alex carp he's been getting a lot of heat lately now as as palantir is moving in, in into the you know business software enterprise corporate america and less in the government side people are calling oh he's not technical enough he's not a software engineer etc etc he's lacking the skills he's getting a lot of heat from, uh, <clears throat> from the community like about not being technical enough what do you think about that i think he's like I put them in that category of like visionaries that he has a vision, he's built it. Maybe it's, it's obviously been bumpy to get to this path, but now I think there's like a golden path ahead. And I think he's, he's a vision. It goes, like I always say, like there's some, they play chess, others play checkers. Like he plays chess. I think for me, then again, not to interview myself, to me, it's a very simple story. Number one, uh, Peter Thiel just gave him another billion dollars in future comp for the next 10 years. Peter Thiel is no idiot. You cannot, you know, you cannot deny that Peter Thiel is, he knows what he's doing. So if Peter Thiel gave, gave this dude a billion dollars for the next 10 years, I think he did a good job. Um, this guy delivers, you know, a TTM pace of 2.2 billion this year. So he's going to make 2.2 mm -hmm. billion this year. He's growing customers by 40%. He's still growing in double digits in times where businesses are looking to cut spending, not to increase spending. People forget that about 2023. <clears throat> he's delivering terrific results. He's, he's, he's absolutely killing it. Okay, so he's not a classic. Yeah, but also CEO. you have, and then the, the, the other thing, well, first of the classic CEO, if you look at the elite, the special, the Hall of Famers, they're not, you can't put them in a box. You can't put Nadella in a box, Cook. You can't, like, in other words, you can't put Musk in a box. But some are better at talking you that can... that language. Like Jensen is b b good at it, and but Anthony Jensen from is so far look, he's really good at talking that talk. Yeah, but I wouldn't exactly, exactly like Jensen is the, in the different whatever, the, LeBron, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. LeBron moment. I mean, whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it. The, the point yeah. is, 
that is like extremely, extremely rare. I mean, you're talking once every 25 years, yeah, Jack yeah, Welsh yeah. or whatever, that you have someone that like is an executor and can talk. But I'm just saying like a lot of times like you can't put them in a box. But the other thing just just to like to round it out is like when, when you also look at it is the biggest transformation in tech since the internet, AI. You gotta make your bet. And it was like, who, which horses you're gonna bet? Yep. Okay, I'll bet Palantir, I'll bet Nvidia, I'll bet Microsoft, I'll bet Snowflake, you bet MongoDB. The point is we're not talking a hundred companies. And and I think one, just one thing, just like for anyone watching, you know, if you look like a lot of these tech stocks, post earnings, they've sold off. You know, people will talk about Microsoft saying it's, it, it's gonna be a slower ramp. That, that's for, no one ever expected the nvidia guidance heard around the world was going to be replicated across so these are knee-jerk type reactions you're talking about a trillion dollars of incremental spend over the next decade yeah. Yeah, i think nvidia is an outlier and it's very hard to judge everybody else based on the outlier short-term reaction in the stock price um again you mentioned jensen is an outlier nvidia is an outlier they're a terrific company. No, no disrespect to them. I mean, but you know, companies don't behave like that. But but it no, but it's also the way. It, but also it's just the way that overnight when you're the overnight. only yeah. you're the only yeah. game in town that sells yeah, GPUs. Yeah. yeah. And no, they, and obviously the way that yeah. Like when I was a kid, and Nvidia was a gaming company. Who would have thought that that you know the dude really like took him to a whole new stratosphere? And, I mean, Microsoft was just a Windows yeah. PC mature company. Till Nadella, had another great AI to... name, by the way. Microsoft is another great under undervalued AI play, which which gets ignored a lot. I mean, that's been our in, in our opinion, like we've talked about. It's been our you know, our top pick here, and I think that was just another example. Like, there's no way Microsoft should be worth five hundred billion. That is ridiculous. It's worth a trillion, trillion and a half. What do you two? Tr Look, the point is. The bears will sit there in their right lane looking for black swan events every weekend. Exactly. Sun and the reality is is that soft landings occurred, Fed's waving the white flag, and it's a risk on, in our opinion, for tech. Um the thing about it is, is I, I always kind of feel like um the it's sometimes um people talk in different wavelengths. Uh, like especially on Twitter, which is a very opinionated platform, as you know, uh, you have these very um, audible, vocal, aggressive discussions. And sometimes I look at it and say, "Guys, you're talking about oranges and apples. I mean, you are a long-term investor. You are a trader. Completely different realms." And uh, I think Palantir and similar companies like Tesla for, for a while there, they were really judged based on you know, oh, what's the share price this year, and instead of looking a little bit more kind of a. No, I, I do think, look, and I do think that, that those things happen, right? Like a lot of times, like, you come in, we'll have a great quarter, great guidance, stock sells off, the narrative, ah, it's done, yeah. it was terrible. But bottom line is, I mean, I could, I could point to hundreds of examples of companies where then all of a sudden market further digests what's happening three six months from now it's yeah, fundamentals totally always win the fundamentals always beat narrative it it, it just how how long it takes it's, just, it's a question of well and i can argue palantir is really it's it's really going to be a side of the park story yep. because what's going to happen is you, you're going to have core palantir give me a value for that you're gonna have the cash and then what's the value of aip what's the value of that platform What's the, because I could argue the value of that piece is extremely higher than maybe the rat. You didn't say, and I think those yeah. are maybe some of the ways that I think investors are going to start to look at some of these names, similar to some of the parts of, as we've looked at, you know, Apple, Amazon, and others. Are you concerned by their customer concentration issues? Because that's been brought up a lot as a negative. Because like top top twenty clients are half their business. If you work in the Beltway with the two hundred two area code, 
customer concentrations like getting a cup of coffee at 8 a.m. <laughs> I, I mean, that. that's, <laughs> like, that's just the Nitra. You know what I mean? Yeah. By the way, there. if you actually look deeper in the numbers, um, the percentage, like, as the customer spend grows per the top 20 clients, and it grows every quarter, by the way, uh, they're now at a, a billion a year of spend per top 20 clients. That number was 470 million in 2020. So as that number doubled, the, the percentage from the entire revenue pie has gone down from 60 to 50%. So it's the client actually is coming down as they're growing. But and then as enterprise, it would just yeah. get more and more yeah. diverse. I actually think, look, I think like something that like, I've talked to a few investors about, but I think what's going to be like a huge topic is going to be, what does the federal fiscal year quarter look like? What types of deals are we starting to see on defense AI driven within government, within civilian agencies? I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a little kind of breadcrumbs to, to yeah. maybe what's on the horizon 24, 25. So is there is there anything like not I'm sure there is but what would be like the the one thing if it, if it comes down the pipeline uh, you would change your mind about the company so currently you, you know one of the biggest bulls from the from the Wall Street community not a lot of people give it twenty five dollars per share so what what's what's the red flag that's gonna freak you out to say no no I'm I'm out <clears throat> yeah I mean red flag things would be if enterprise success so let's walk through like the the risk yeah. Um, you know, not able to monetize AIP at a level that you expected over the next 12, 18, 24 months. Mm -hmm. Two would be parlaying defense success, 202 area code, to enterprise. That would be second. Third would be, Okay, like ma I'm going like macro, black swan, you yeah. know, like budgets get cut, AI gets pushed out. I but look like when you look at those, like I'm not saying like there's bumps in the road and there's risk in there, but I look my, my whole career, I've always viewed it like what are the key themes you want to bet on? Pick your winners and then individually based on whatever you're really, you know, you pick your spots. But that's how it's been a pretty simple formula how I've kind of covered names. Palantir, I just view as like, you have an AI basket, they're like, they're deep in that basket as one of those plays. And I just don't think that you can just put in and say, my view is like, okay, if there's a trillion dollars of incremental spend, 800 billion conservatively, you're telling me this can't be a $50 billion mark cap? And to, you know, where, where would I view that you ultimately could have revenues that doubles the next three, four years. So that's sort of, but, but those are the ways that you have to look at names like this. You cannot put them in a box and just say, typical stocks traded X times PE, yeah. 19 times. I feel like that's how you've missed every transformational growth thing in the last 20 years. Well, that's the problem with value investors. They tend to miss out on this, on the Teslas and the and the Palantirs and the and the Nvidia's. Even Nvidia was expensive; still is expensive. I mean, as as a value investor, like once you go to P ratios, and it, it, uh, price to sales ratios, it's very hard to um, to make a call like that. Like Rivian is a great example, by the way, of that. Like, look, Rivian, but, but Rivian, yeah, Rivian's like another good example, right? Like if you view it just on like money they burn near term where okay now let's look at on the other side like when they get actually to scale like not just on the commercial side with amazon but just w when you look at like when you start to get into 150 200,000, you get atlanta up in terms of the factor build out along with illinois what does rivian look like and i mean rj is another one like i'll yeah. bet just like carp just like Musk, just like Nadell. Like, I'm not put in that necessarily like, tag, but I'm saying RJ is someone like I bet on. Because that's the other a good thing. Like, a good CEO is like, without that, it's a, I mean, um, I wouldn't invest in a company with, with a Bozo look, CEO, no matter how good Never are. Look, never underestimate how bad managing teams could be, 
EG snap, lift. Yeah. Never overestimate how great managing teams are and what that means. From the Delta Moss to Cook. But even if you just take, if you just look at Rivian, like uh, look, I think Rivian is a sad story to me so far, because in a sense they were a victim of their own kind of hype, the hype, the initial hype out of the gate valuation, uh, was so insanely out of this world that now they're they're tagged under this. Oh, it's a they, because people look oh Nicola and the uh, and Rivian. They no, but they but also Rivian did, uh, but also Rivian like. They did like they had a lot of supply chain issues, right? Yeah. They remember the price increase that they they did, and they took it back twenty four hours later. I mean, that was a comedy of errors. Yeah. The well, that's a young nine, team, well, just being a young team. No, I mean, but the, but it is. But but now now adults are in the room. It's a different story. Yeah. They're starting to story. turn around. But look, Uber. I say the same thing. Go back to Uber since IP. Now look yeah. at Uber today. Well, they kicked out the uh, never mind. But I, all I'm saying, like even even Tesla pre Larry Ellison and post Larry Ellison was a different story. The way corporate. Uh, well, because you have because it, but also the way you, when you have someone like that in the boardroom. Yeah, it's a different. It changes story. the conversation, and I mean that was like a Miyagi type movement to yeah. you know Ralph Macho. And 80, you know, he doesn't 84. get enough credit in the in the Tesla story. He I think. You know, it's funny when Ellison came on. I've known Larry since the late nineties, you know, covering Oracle and gotten to know him. When he came on, I remember we write a note and be like, this is this is gold. Like this is huge. And the amount of hate being like, you're you're saying Ellison's gonna be a pot I mean, Tom, like I'm talking like, oh my but and then if you really think about it, he really was the one where like strategically did things within the board, then ultimately yep. raised money. That was a whole issue, raise money again with the kid. Look, I, going back to Rivian, simple analysis, very layman. They're in trucks and SUVs, two of the best categories to be in as an automaker in the United States. They make great cars that people love. Every car yep. review, the Rivian car is stellar. The brand is good. Marquise Brownlee is uh, like doing a reviews on it, like an iPhone. So it's an iPhone level kind of uh, vanity product, right? They have top talent, not Tesla level talent, but like second tier, really good talent. Uh, they're getting better every quarter. Um, I like, in my opinion, I, I think they can be great. They're not the second coming of Tesla, but they can be a great car company. But I, and I've spent a few days at their production, you know, uh, up in uh, in Illinois. It's super impressive, like in terms of what they're building out there. Um, I want to ask you before uh, we have a few more minutes. Uh, so people, are, uh, uh, there's a few members from our community who posted some questions and I want to pull it up right here. Um, I'm going to put it on the screen so uh, sure. we can share this right here. So this is from our Discord. And Paul uh, Stringer is asking, what other names is Dan looking at? As possible future plays, I think it means more like AI you know, or future plays. Like, what what else I mean, are you looking at except like Tesla and Putty, which you covered today? I mean, I think Ma like look, Mongo's already been discovered. I think that's AI. Like, I think Soundhound is an AI play. I think Pega is an under the radar AI play as well. You know, Pe Pega Systems. Um, and also, I'm looking now. <clears throat> you know, what I ultimately believe are going to be some of these use cases that start to come up. And you know, I think there's going to be a whole sort of disruptive basket that starts to play out on the AI side. I think there's going to be a cybersecurity angle as well on, on the AI plays. Um, and uh, as far as AI specifically, like we covered this, uh, uh, talking, in my opinion, two of the best AI plays in the market is Tesla Palantir, no specific order, but I mean, when C look and C three has been a name that we've been, you know, very positive on. Another controversial name, but that's another one. Like they got execute, show success, start to go outside of utilities into other verticals. Tom Siebel, another person I've known for decades and decades, you know, personally, and I'm that that's someone like I'm going to bet on. 
But no, yeah. I'm just trying to say like, like they're getting a lot of heat but because example. of the the pivot, like because they haven't like originally came from that from that from that space. Uh, the little bit of a pivot of a, of the C3 AI yeah, is like a, people people hate on that because they, they want pure, clean stories which are easy to to kind of understand. Hundred uh, percent. So uh, in that sense, uh, I want to touch on some other questions I had real, real quick before we move on. So talking about Tesla as an AI play, so. Uh, like in best case scenario, uh, where Tesla is right now, I think you think on its trajectory, because people say, well, it's a trillion dollar company already almost. So how high can it go? I mean, do you think uh, Tesla is kind of maturing or it's just kind of in the early stages? I think it's the just in the early stages of the sum of the parts story playing out. I mean, the supercharger battery and I could argue FSD you know, you could argue that's probably one of the better AI plays yeah. out there. It just has them in the script. And then when, as they start to get more and more scale, I mean, I, I just go back today globally, single digit percent is EV. Like in, in other words, like wh where is this all heading? I think Tesla's still in the early stages. And just looking at, uh, like I tweeted about this today, I, said, uh, I, I think that with the exception of BYD, because they get it. Nobody else, maybe VYD and a little bit of Jim Farley, because he's starting to get it. Nobody else in the auto industry uh, globally understands how bad their situation is because that they're so far behind with as far as infrastructure, as far as uh, R&D, as far as uh, deployment supply chains. Uh, I don't think nobody's making moves right now to try and catch up with Tesla, except well, BYD is competing in a different category. Well, I think BYD is not even comparable yeah. to this. Like it's like the people who buy BYD will never buy a Tesla and vice versa. I mean, they're... yeah, but yeah, but also I would argue. I mean, obviously GM's a name like I'm a big fan of, like on the turnaround story. Like, I mean, if you if you just see what's happening in GM right now, it's a different GM. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that that's it's not a Tesla. I'm, but I'm I'm just trying to give example that like. You think they can turn GM, around? I believe they can turn around. And I believe, like for GM and Ford, if they're 10% successful, the stocks work. Like Because you know, they've been so, so, punished, so punished over the past uh, three years. But the problem too is that investors just continue to view it as like book value, EBITDA. Yeah. Like I, look, I, I personally think like <clears throat> they're held to a wrong standard. In my opinion, I mean, they're trying to transform the company toward EVs and, and you're sitting there trying to pinpoint, you know, what what cash flow looks like over the next year. I just don't think that's the right way to view it. Well, they have a huge challenge, though, if you think about it, because they're dragging they're dragging a whole industry, which is uh, at this point is obsolete, which they have to maintain to survive, which is the internal combustion engine industry while trying to pivot into EVs, that's a hor that's a that's a Herculean effort. Yeah, it's Herculean, but GM sells seven point eight million vehicles a year. Like the point is, like Ford does what nine hundred fifty thousand F one fifties a year. I mean, the point is, like these numbers are mad. Like if they could be success, look, it just speaks to my view. The green tidal wave mm -hmm. is it's happened. Like in you know, and and there's gonna be many beneficiaries of it. Look, uh, I think Ford and GM have something that the Tesla doesn't have, which they, they they're too important politically to fail. Uh, they have too many people depend on it, too many jobs politically. Nobody's gonna let them fail, so they'll be fine. I don't think anybody's uh, like actually going bankrupt. But I think as far as the the balance of power in the North American auto industry is changing. And I, I no, think in 10 no years, doubt. it's going to be completely different. Um, like it's a, it's like Boeing, you know, political suicide to, to screw around with Boeing, with Ford, GM. There's too much political. Yeah, but also, but also look, I mean, GM and Ford now, like, I mean, they're partnering with Tesla. Like, in other words, like, I think there's there's yeah. changes in the industry. Well, that's because Jim Farley, is, he gets it. I think he get, no, Far lucky? Farley yeah. gets it. Yeah, he yeah. gets it. That was a smart uh, change they've made. Not to disrespect yeah. anybody, but he, he definitely gets it. And uh, he, he, he deserves full respect. Uh, he built that relationship with Elon and Tesla early on. That good definitely. Thing. Uh, 
Uh, final question before you before we, we let you go. Uh, completely unrelated, out of left field. Big uh, there's 10, a lot yeah, of chatter. They win national champion. Oh, I, wait, wait, right, wait, wait no. Right, sure. uh, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, that well, that that'll be the last question. Okay, cool. So uh, you mentioned sports. Uh, so we you know we don't agree on anything on everything, right? We agree on a lot. Uh, I've been very critical of Apple in the streaming industry because of, uh, I mean, Apple have struggled, in my opinion, to, uh, like Netflix have a legacy library, Disney has legacy library, uh, Amazon and Apple, they're in the same problem of, uh, they have to generate from scratch or they, buy something. They have a mansion with no furniture. Yeah, so Apple, but Apple, like how likely is that deal where Iger says, well, I don't need ESPN, I need cash. Like, we're, we're drowning, and then uh, Apple comes in, swoops in. It's <clears> a moat. <throat> I mean, if you get ESPN and Apple, Look, that's a moat. We talked to, we talked to, I mean, I think that Pac-12 situation, which obviously blew up Pac-12, but the point is what Apple having a deal on the table shows just more and more of live sports. They recognize from a streaming perspective, that's where it's all going. And that's why, like, if, if ESPN is on the table, you know, depending on, on which way and, and how Iger goes about it with Disney, like, Apple is going to take a serious, serious look at it. You know, look, they haven't historically done acquisition. I mean, the biggest one they did was Beats, three and a half billion. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, this is going to be, we're going to see massive changes in streaming linear as well as streaming, you know, next, next few years. Well, Tim Cook likes to build his own stuff because he thinks he can do it better. Of course. I get it. And, and he, he has. Can't, he has. And if you look at Apple TV, the content is really good. They, 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 like they originally no, the quality produce is content. Phenomenal. Is, yeah. Like Netflix is struggling. to. They're spending so much money and it's not as good. Apple, is, But the, quant, the, quant, the sheer quantity of content, they cannot uh, grow it from scratch. They need to acquire uh, IP. Uh, and ESPN is just a huge moat. I mean, that's something that people will subscribe 100%. for. Look at how much Amazon spent on Thursday Night Football, which is like, I know. it's, uh, you think there's any other contenders that will come, like maybe an Amazon for ESPN? I mean, look, if, if something like that comes on, I mean, everyone's going to have to look at it in tech, but Apple would be the one that would make the most sense for a number of reasons. Uh, yeah, they have the cash. They have massive amounts of cash. They have the ecosystem. But then the streaming the platform yeah, customer. Yeah. But also like that Pac-12, yeah. the fact that they had a deal out there, shows. Yeah. Uh, so talking about the conferences, you mentioned the Pac-12. There's a bit better conference, I would say. It's Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten, second best conference. And, uh, obviously, you, you cannot discount the SEC. But uh, the best conference that doesn't cheat in recruiting. <laughs> um Who's, who's, I think uh, Big Ten. No, I think Big. Look, Big Ten this year is my view in college. I mean, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan are going to be three of the top six or seven teams. And I look. I just think now as we go into playoffs, the twelve per you know the twelve team yeah. playoff two thousand twenty four, that's going to be the game changer. USC, UCLA coming to Big Ten, Oregon, Washington coming to Big Ten. I it's just super exciting stuff for college football you know and obviously look sec has dominated yeah you know for for so many years but but you do now i think the 12 team playoff changes everything well that that's been advocated ever since the obama days finally they're getting it done but uh, i i i think that the uh, i think that it, it's almost to the point where the Big Ten has one had traditionally one SEC ten a team, which was Ohio State. They they recruit like the SEC, they play like the SEC. Everything is mm. it's an SEC team in the Big Ten, and they whooped everybody's behind. For the past two years, they got schooled by the better school across the road, and now it's a whole different ball game. Now it's wide open. Penn State is great, Michigan is great. Well, Michigan, yeah, is, I mean, Michigan, Michigan's gonna be special this year. Ohio State, so it's. Look, you guys have a great it's, quarterback. It's, There's a great team. There's a lot of contenders for that. For, for no, that it's going to be. It's going to be. I'm super excited, man. I'm a. Uh, it's going to be great. I am. But look, Tom, I just want to say thanks. First of all, thanks everyone that joined. You know, it was great to great to engage and talk and just great questions. And you, know, you guys do a great job.
And I apologize for holding you on 10 minutes than the original agreement. Uh, I, you were a good sport for agreeing to do that for another uh, 10 extra minutes. I appreciate it. I know you're very of busy, especially on vacation. Uh, I want to thank the audience here, 1,500 people who stay through the stream and uh, engage with us for all the great comments in the chat. I've, I've seen some of them. I tried to, to put up on the screen a few of them. Thank you for everybody for joining. Uh, Dan, I would love to have you for part three in a few months, obviously, as, as this thing develops. And uh, we're going to end the broadcast right here. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.